What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to be talking about adaptation to environment. Just like how this monster looks like he has two huge eyes. He looks like a much bigger organism than he really is to scare off all of his predators, right? So we're going to talk a lot about these kind of things in this video. As you can see here, there's a few things to cover. And the thing is, to be honest, when I was reading the book, it's a really, really boring chapter to read. Like it's so much random information and little things you got to remember, but it's really, really tough to read. The book was painful, but hopefully we put a lot of effort for you guys to try and make this much more memor memorizable, much more understandable, much more fun than reading a book because it was painful, even for me, honestly. So there's a lot of things, but hopefully it will make sense, okay? So sit back, chill out, and just watch the video and hopefully it will all make sense. Guys, but make sure, guys, doing questions is so important. So check out teachme.org for lots of IB style questions and awesome, awesome notes. Okay, it'll help you guys out a lot, especially as you guys approach these exams, okay? So let's just get started. Enough talk, let's, let's fight, okay? So guys, when we learn what we're learning about now falls all under the category of ecology. So it's a kind of subtopic of biology. So what is ecology? It's basically the study of the relationships between living organisms like this little wolf here and their physical environment, how they're able to adapt to that environment, how their environment poses certain problems for them or certain advantages for them. Basically, that's what ecology is, okay? It's very, very straightforward. And that's important. Why? Because our planet has so many depending where you're from or where you are, there are so many different kinds of environments, right? And those environments are only tolerable to certain organisms, right? Like the desert, this meerkat can survive there, or this camel, but not me and you, right? We're gonna die for sure. So that's very important. That's why I need to study ecology to understand how these relationships work and what's really going on, okay? So you can think about where you're from and think about what the environment is like there. Hopefully you're not from here, right? Because that'd be painful. Now, there are certain words we need to understand in ecology that pop up all the time and you think you know them, but you really don't. And then definition comes up, you got to define this, and then you think you got it right, but you somehow don't get the points because the definitions are quite specific. So this is one scenario where I would encourage you to really master the definition, okay? Memorize it. I'm sorry, but this is the one scenario where you got to memorize it. Okay, so let's get into it. The best way to define, to cover these definitions is to start from species, then go to population, then community, then ecosystem, okay? Trust me, this, this will work. So, by the way, this is the movie, movie Lion King, right? The one, the one picture from Lion King movie. I like the cartoon better, but you know, life's life. So what's, what is a species? So a species is any organisms, any two organisms or whatever that can interbreed, so have a baby that is fertile. Fertile meaning that baby can now have their own baby. So for example, if you have two lions, right? They will have a kid together and their kid will be able to have their own kid. Therefore, we can say that the two lions were the same species, okay? If you have a lion interbreeding with a giraffe, even if they can have a kid, that kid will not be able to have their own child. It will be infertile. So therefore, the lion and giraffe are not the same species, okay? I hope that makes sense. So what's population? Very straightforward a group of the same species. So if you have a, so for example, here's a group of giraffes. That's a population of giraffes, okay? Very straightforward. Um, what about community? So community is this right here. It's when you have a, a bunch of populations living together in, the, in an area at the same time. So you have a group of giraffes here, so a population of giraffes, you have a population of elephants, population of, I think those are zebras maybe. They're all living together at the same time. So that's called a community, okay? Hopefully that makes sense as well. So what's ecosystem? So an ecosystem is a community and the abiotic environment. What does that mean? A community, so all of these plants, all of these different species and populations living together, all of the living organisms and the non-living environment. Okay, that makes sense. But what do you mean by non-living or abiotic environment? They're very straightforward. What do you think is non-living in this picture here. What do you think is non-living in this picture? The grass? No, it's made up of cells, right? What about this rock? Yes, this rock can be an abiotic factor. What about sunlight? Yeah, that's an abiotic factor. What about water? In like, what if, what if there's a river somewhere, right? 
That's also, what about soil? Yeah, all of those things are abiotic factors because they're not made up of cells. So anything that's not made up of cells, you can consider an abiotic factor, okay? So an ecosystem is a community and all the abiotic environments, okay? Let's li uh, but don't worry, I'm gonna list them here for you guys. So abiotic just means non-living. So biotic means living, okay? So here's a bunch of ones that I just kind of mentioned. Don't, there's many more than these, obviously. So just um, know these um, for reference, but there are other ones, okay? Okay, cool. Now, the reason why the lion is able to survive in this ecosystem is because it is able to tolerate these abiotic factors. If the lion wasn't adapted to surviving the sunlight, um, the rocks, the water, or anything like maybe the temperature, if he wasn't adapted to these abiotic factors, he would not be able to survive in this environment, right? So it's very important. The reason why an organism is able to be in an environment, in a certain ecosystem, is because it can tolerate the abiotic factors. If you put a lion into the ocean, is it gonna survive? No, it can't tolerate surviving in water, okay? It needs oxygen, needs to be above the water, right? So um, an organism needs to be able to tolerate its abiotic environment in order to thrive in that environment. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.